Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today we are vlogging mainly in the kitchen because I think there's like a air pollution advisory because we're gonna start getting some sandy sandstorms for the monsoon. So, I am in my kitchen and I'm going to be preserving a lot of different things, so this will probably be like a two day, two day vlog. But first, I have to show you guys something that I am so excited about. So before I get to my sheer excitement, to make sure that you guys subscribe to our channel and like this video, give it a big thumbs up because it does truly, truly help out our channel. And then also we are trying to get to 10K by the end of the summer. So if you can share our videos, make sure you subscribe, support the channel, that will help out greatly. Now, I have been wanting something forever. Now, I live in a small space, live in a townhome, which is why I have a small space garden. <laughs> and I had been looking for a freezer that was exactly 5.8 cubic feet because it would fit perfectly in my small space and it would be able to hold all of the vegetables coming out of my garden that I'm freezing. I do have a small chest freezer that's in my garage that I am putting, I put all of our meats in and then our freezer in the kitchen is more so like overflow of like some fruits and also stock is something that I want to stock everything in. Um, like chicken stock, beef stock, lamb stock, and gravies. Now, I know when it comes to pressure canning different things like stocks, you want to make sure that you have like follow a recipe so that you don't get anything like botulism or anything like that. But my gravy is when I'm making a meat that's full of flavor, full of everything, I just want to stick that whole thing into the freezer because I want to be able to pull that out, add a little bit of arrowroot or cornstarch or flour, whichever one I feel like doing, and making a quick gravy that's already seasoned, already ready to go. So I use my freezer for gravies and for also healthy stocks, like ones that are like um, for like like a lemongrass stock or something that I don't want to highly pressure cook in order in, in that it kind of decreases any of the benefits that may happen. So if someone's sick or something like that, it's more like a stock like that. So I finally got this freezer. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like because now I can officially have a veggie and fruit freezer, a meat freezer, and a stock and just like overflow of like quick meals or breads or different things like that. So everything can all be separated. Now guys, this is definitely a small space. This is in my laundry room and I do have our like kind of like stock stuff there like of canned goods and different things like that. But I got my freezer. I'm trying to, wants to go out of focus because we're in such a small space. But I'm pretty excited about it. Let me open it up and show you guys. Okay, so it is small, but at the top I have all of my butters and my fats and like my um, dill butters, my cilantro butters, rosemary butters, different things like that that are already pre-made. And then I have a row of tomatoes, all of those tomatoes I grew myself, might I add. And then I have broccolis and cauliflowers since we use those a lot. I have all the onions that I got from the farm and preserved, as well as the celery that I grew, and then all of the herbs that I grew too as well, and then a bottom row of peppers and chilies. So uh, cooking from scratch can be a kind of like a daunting task, but if you have everything separated to where then you're just going in and you're grabbing this, grabbing that, grabbing whatever, throwing it all in the pot, throwing it all in the pan, then it makes life a lot easier if it's already cut up, it's already ready to go. And some things I even have like in just like little bags, like I have stir fry bags that have carrots and um, carrots and broccoli and cauliflower or snow peas or anything like that, whichever little combinations that I've made or whatever I had abundance of in my garden, then I just make little quick um, meals in little bags. Now, I have a ton of things that I'm going to be preserving over the next two days. I have all of my tomatoes, which I have a canning recipe and video on how I can my Roma tomatoes, so I won't go over that. I will link that down below in the bio so that you guys can um, find that video. 
I also am starting to get fish. Um, every time I find fish on sale, I get about two to three pounds of fish. This is cod because we use a lot of cod and our local sprouts had it on sale, so I am going to vacuum seal this. And I also have some strawberries that I just picked up. I found this huge two pound um, box of organic strawberries on sale. And then I had some bananas that I'm gonna freeze with them. I have some um, nectarines that I'm also going to freeze that I'm gonna make a little smoothie mix with. And then my aloe vera is putting off all these little pups. <laughs> so I need to start figuring out how to repot these and I'm gonna cut open this pumpkin that I have had for a whole year because I wanted to see if I could keep a pumpkin too. Actually, it's been since October. So, lots to do today, but first I am going to get dressed and look a little bit more presentable and then we're gonna start doing some of these tasks. All right guys, I'm back and I swear I am getting bullied by the hummingbirds. So uh, my hummingbirds get filtered water and organic cane sugar. And I feel like no other house does that. They always have that little red powdery stuff. And if there's no water in this little thing, they attack me. They like full on like attack me. So I'm gonna put it back. I just made its little filtered water and all that. I'm gonna put it back where it goes here. And then hopefully, They'll just continue to be nicer to me. But I'm praying we get some rain today or sometime this week too as well. All right guys, so I just pulled out the vacuum sealer and we're gonna talk about the vacuum sealer. And then also I am right now soaking all of the tomatoes in some vinegar water. I like to soak anything that I'm going to can or anything like that. I like to soak it in like um, vinegar water. And then for the fruit that I'm going to freeze, that's back there, I am going, minus the bananas, I'm going to soak that in some apple cider vinegar. So we're gonna get all of that going. We're gonna get the tomatoes pulled out, the strawberries thrown in there with some apple cider vinegar, and then we're gonna sit and talk about the vacuum sealer that I have, what I like about it, and why you should vacuum seal your food. Let's talk vacuum sealer. Now, this is actually my third vacuum sealer because I was one of those people that I was like, okay, I need to get a vacuum sealer, a water bath canner, a pressure canner, a Berkey, a everything for preserving all at the same time because I didn't have them and I wanted to do that. I wanted to make sure my family had everything that we needed and also it saves a lot of money if I can buy things in bulk. Um, you can buy things a lot cheaper if you buy a big supply of them versus if you are buying them portion by portion. So I have been finding a lot of meats that are on sale and I also am going to be buying a fourth of a cow, like a fourth of a cow, the whole thing. Well, not the whole cow, but the whole fourth of a cow. So I'm gonna be able to make my own bone broth um, straight from like the cow parts. And I'm going to get, I think it's some tallow too as well that I'm gonna try making some soap with. And then I'm gonna get all the parts that I can cut up and well, they're gonna be cut up and then I can put them in my chest freezer outside, which is why I'm trying to clear out all my freezers. I'm getting all of the uh, vegetables and fruits, you guys already saw those. And then I'm all the, like the uh, scrap, food scraps and like chicken feet and parts and different things like that that I have for bone broth. I'm gonna be making bone broth all this week so that then I can get everything cleaned up, put away, organized, so then when I get a fourth of a cow, I can put the fourth of a cow into something and it all fits. That's the goal, life goals here. So. Why is this my third vacuum sealer? It's my third vacuum sealer because I, when I was buying everything, was like, I cannot believe the prices of some of these things. I mean, a pressure canner, like one of those all-American pressure canners are like a million dollars. So I bought a cheap pressure canner. I don't regret it. I do have to watch it. I do have to make sure, and it does make me a little bit like nervous. So I over pressure can time things sometimes a little bit, depending on what it is. 
but it still works good. I got gifted a water bath canner. It wasn't the most expensive water bath canner, but it works perfectly. I put a little bit of vinegar in there to help with those little calcium deposits on my glasses and it works perfect. And then I bought a cheap vacuum sealer. Now, the first one I found it on, I think it was OfferUp and it was like one from like 50 years ago. It was like the first vacuum sealer and it just did not seal. <laughs> like I did all this meat and everything and within a day it started to unseal. So I had to go out, I went to Walmart and I bought a vacuum sealer, the only one that they had, le well they had this one but a bigger one like the big big one that was pretty expensive and then they had the one that you have to push and hold and i was like okay i'm just gonna get the one i have to push and hold because i do not want to spend even more money for one of these vacuum sealers so i got that one and it was a poor choice <laughs> having to push and hold it you never get the seal right it never like vacuums like well, you can get the one line correct and then when you go to actually vacuum it and seal it when you're pushing and holding it it's not it's not worth it so I went on Amazon and I got this size food saver I think they now have them at Walmart they didn't have it at the time that I was looking for them but they I think they might have them now but I'll link this one down below and this one is perfect you literally just put the food in the bag you just open it up put it down lock it press the button and it seals it vacuums it does everything that you need to do while you're preparing the next one now What's important about food saving and doing vacuum or doing the vacuum seal on your meats is that guys, this will make your meats last a long time. I, let me grab something out of the freezer real quick. So even when you try super, super hard to get all the air out of the basket or all the air out of the bag, you still get ice crystals. And if you don't use it fast enough, it's going to get frostbitten. Vacuum seal, nothing. It gets all the air out. It's perfect. If you have something like ground beef, you can smush it to where it's flat and you can just stack everything. You can fit way more in your freezer if you get a vacuum sealer. And it keeps your food for way longer. This, I swear, I tried to get all the air out, like mushed it over, sucked it with the straw, everything, and I still have ice crystals. Luckily, I'm gonna be using this coming up here so that I can make a couple of different broths, but once I got my vacuum sealer, it changed my life. All right guys, so this is why I soak all of my fruit in apple cider vinegar. We have a nice little thing of blueberries, strawberries, and nectar rings that we're gonna get cut up and frozen. And then, yeah, look at how gross that water is. Organic fruits have organic dirtiness, so make sure you guys are cleaning stuff. All right guys, so we have this beautiful big piece of cod. They had it on sale for $8.99. Um, so I got a two pound piece and I'm going to cut this up into three different portions so that then I can freeze them and use them either for a fish stew or just for a baked fish. All right, so that gave me one dinner stew portion and then also two lunch portions. Now my lunch portions are smaller obviously than my dinner one um, and that's because usually when it's lunch, we don't eat as much as we do for dinner. So I try and prepare three meals throughout the day and then also have things like different pastas or different things like that in the refrigerator for different snacks. Our Mr. Benson just likes to get his chips and cheese <laughs> and salsa. So 
he'll do nachos. So I always have some tortilla chips. So uh, I have all those. Those are going to get labeled and go into the freezer. And then I have my fruit cutting board that I'm getting ready to do all of the fruit with. One of the things I do highly suggest is always have an empty dishwasher. So then that way you can just, once you get done with one project, put those dishes in the dishwasher, go on to the next project, and then that way it'll keep you sane. So I think that's where I'm going to leave you guys from now. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting up the fruit and then I am going to put it in some or some of my reusable gift bag or reusable freezer bags that I will show you guys how much fruit I get tomorrow and then also I will cut open this pumpkin tomorrow and see what it looks like inside, see if it survived. I don't know about it. I think I waited maybe a little bit too late, but we will see. So, and then I'm going to get all the tomatoes canned. But until next time guys, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. See you tomorrow.